The Six and Seven Figure Show, Episode 72. Let's hit it. Broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun outside Phoenix, Arizona, this is the Six to Seven Figure Show. Tired of working so hard and having no time? Take your six figure practice and turn it to a thriving seven figure enterprise. And now, your host, author, speaker, mentor, and strategist, Frank Bria. Hey everyone, welcome to the Six to Seven Figure Show. I'm your host, Frank Bria, and today I am absolutely thrilled to be joined by my good friend, uh, Kyle Lasota, who is uh, the expert in helping seven-figure entrepreneurs become the category king in their niche using video storytelling. Uh, Kyle, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Frank. So let's start off with what is a category king? <laughs> Great question. A category king is, think of Airbnb or think of Uber or think of these iconic brands that we now know, uh, maybe even as simple as Kleenex. And these companies, they didn't enter into a market trying to disrupt the market. They actually created something that never existed before. And they created their own category, essentially becoming the category king. And because they created this new category, there's no competition. You know, a lot of people talk about red ocean, blue ocean. A lot of people talk about category of one. Um, This is a whole new concept that, uh, listen to me, I'm such a marketer talk, right? (laughs) Right? Like the new opportunity, but it's true. There is a new opportunity. Um, Or I, I like to think of it as a new paradigm or a new way of thinking is like, let's not compete, let's create. And so how do we create our own category where not only do we stand alone, but we create a new need for the marketplace. And what's really interesting about the category King stuff is like, I did this for myself without even knowing that I was doing it. And then I read this book called play bigger, which is actually where that term was coined. Uh, I forget the guy's names who wrote the book, but some dudes in Silicon Valley, they, I read that book and they were talking about category King stuff. And I was like, yo, this is really smart. And I had developed this for my own business without even realizing that I had done it. And then I just, I realized that this is what more and more people, especially in the online space, especially as the marketplace gets noisier and noisier, with more people uh, trying to communicate their message, then uh, it's, it's more important now than ever. Yeah, and you are emphasizing the idea that you create this category through storytelling. Why, why is that the, the thing? I mean, why is it storytelling instead of product quality or accessibility or price or anything else? Why is that the, the, the thing that does it? Yeah, totally. And it's a great distinction. And I think for me, the way that I saw it is, of course, it just works for what I'm doing, right? And that's what I'm selling. Um, but what it comes down to as well is like, especially now that personal branding has become more and more of an importance and I think eventually is going to be leading every single company, even the biggest companies in the world, you know, you're going to have to have a big personal brand and manage it appropriately yeah. and, and sort of control the narrative of how people see you um, to make sure that it's in alignment with the goals of the company and what you're trying to create so that the message is really congruent, um, not only from a top down approach, but from a bottom up approach. And so with storytelling, like why is that the gateway with personal branding? Well, it's like anyone can try to compete with you on product. Anyone can try to compete with you on price. Anyone can try to compete with you on go to market strategy and no one can compete with you on your story and your message. Mm -hmm. And There's no one else in the world, Frank, who has been through the experiences that you've been through and has had the revelations that you've had and has been given and gifted the purpose that you've been given and put on this planet to fulfill. And so by you articulating and clearly communicating your story in a way that's authentic and genuine to who you are, you will be able to be seen by exactly the right type of people and you'll be able to stand alone in your own space and separate yourself from everyone else because you communicated your story in this way and it's going to be different than no than anyone else and my job as a marketer as a, as a videographer as a creative is to figure out like okay 
I know how to tell lots of stories, but how do I see the story that hasn't been, been told in this context and for this person yeah. that is going to completely set them apart from everything else so that they're not competing anymore. People are going to come to you, not because of even what you do or, or how you serve people, but because of who you are. You know, the, one of the things about that that's fascinating, and for, for those people who don't know you, and I've, I've sat down to be able to talk with you a few times about your business and what you do, is you pull that out of people. Like, because I don't know that all of us, like, I think we all kind of know that there probably is a story and it's probably unique. And we probably have some ideas of what that is. But I think one of the fascinating things that you do and one of the things that kind of makes you really good at what you do is that you, you kind of come to it a little bit with a clean slate and you're like, okay, well, you can tell me a little bit, but you dig and, and like pull that really compelling story out. And I've seen the work you've done with a couple of your clients and it's fascinating because it goes way deeper than I think any of them would have expected it would have gone. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, with that, it's, I don't know the way that I, I look at the, my process is that I can't take anywhere. I can't take anyone to a place that I haven't gone. Mm. And, Interesting. and because of my life experience and because of, um, different things that I've been through, there was, there was a time in my life where I suffered quite deeply and I realized that that suffering was, was such a gift that was given to me because it really humbled me. Mm. And with that humility, um, it, I sort of let go of, of, of how I judge people and I developed a much greater sense of empathy. And so when I sit with someone to do this interview, I give them the opportunity to be seen without judgment and in full presence. And this sounds very esoteric, but it is somewhat of like a spiritual experience. Yeah. Uh, because rarely in our life do we ever get to be witness in such intense presence. And the power of what I do is capturing the essence of someone's soul and seeing them without judgment and in full empathy and understanding for just who they are as a human being, you know, walking around in, in, in our, in this existence, in their meat suit that we call the human body. And, and I just get to capture and extract that moment in time yeah. and, and then encapsulate it and turn it into a beautiful piece of art that is not only reverse engineered, to speak and connect directly with the ideal customer, but also represents them in the deepest and truest way possible that they didn't even know was attainable. And then turn that into a marketing message. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, that is, I think the, the essence of the difference, the, the depth that you go. I mean, I almost think like videographer is such a bad title for you. You know what I mean? Cause I've been working on my position. <laughs> I've been trying to come up with, with, with a better way to say it, but no, but I mean, I mean, again, it, it's functionally accurate, but the thing is, is that, you know, where most people I think would, would get down to the visual aesthetics of the product and, you know, and maybe some scripting and things like that. You're for you, the script is the person. And that I think is, fundamentally what what differentiates what you do with a lot of other people so so the question i guess is because a lot of people are probably thinking about this and obviously everyone's got a story and obviously that story is fundamental to their business but what's the right time to engage in this journey for lack of a better term in in the lifespan of a business i mean when someone's just starting out do they have the requisite understanding of who they are and what that journey is or do they have would they have need to have gone through some of their own entrepreneurial turmoil first is th so the story doesn't always have to be like this like roller coaster up and down right it could be a story of, of transformation or it could be just a story a moment you know yeah, like yeah. it could just be a significant moment where they had a realization or whatever you know it doesn't have to be um, super emotional in the sense of like, oh, everyone's crying, 
it, it could just be like, I'll give you an example of a story, right? Like I had a story this, this, um, this summer, you know, of, of like, you know, I did really well in business this year for, for my terms. And then like what I realized is that there was something that was missing, right? There was something that, that I, that, that I had missed, like my business model wasn't right or, you know, like, cause I was getting burnt out and like, if yeah. you're ever getting burnt out, then that's a signal that something is off. Right. Right. And so in the process of trying to figure this out, I just said, you know what, I'm going to put my business on hold and I'm going to just like stop for like six weeks and I'm going to go on vacation. And when I was on vacation, I went to uh, mind value and uh, I was listening to vision Lakiani, who's the CEO of mind Valley, speak about, this concept called uh, soul, soul print values. And what I realized through doing this exercise with vision is that um, my company didn't have my core values imbued into it. Ah, yeah. And, and so there was an, a misalignment between like what I was doing in business and like who I was or how I was acting and behaving and showing up. And so like, the big realization that I had when I was on vacation was that I needed to start acting in alignment with my core values through my business and, and other areas of life. And so when I got back, I made a declaration like, Hey, like I'm moving more and more into the health and wellness space. Cause that's my top value. And that's why we're going to talk about the YouTube channel that I've got some stuff brewing over there. And I'm starting to partner with companies that are in that space and the reason why that is so important to me is because wellness is such a big part of my life. And I felt like it, this business wasn't serving the need that I needed to fulfill through that value. And thus I was burning out. So there's a story of realization, right? That has nothing to do with like, oh my God, it was so tumultuous and it was so emotional. It was just like, oh my God, I had this awakening of, of, Wow. And then if someone's listening to this and they're feeling out of alignment or they're feeling burnt out, you know, something I might said might trigger about like, oh my God, I need to go check out this thing called the soul print values, or I need to go look into a vision Lakiani, or I need to re reassess like where I'm at with my core values. So we can use strategic storytelling to um, imbue and to conceptualize an idea in someone's head, because the only place where real learning takes, takes place is through storytelling, right? Because if I tell you information, that's me giving you something, right. right? Then it's not yours, it's mine. But if I tell you a story and then you decide what that means for you, then that's yours. And so that's where you get to decide what something means and you get to own that idea. And until we own an idea, we'll never take responsibility for it. So that is why it's the greatest teacher and the greatest way to market and to message and to attract and bring people into what you're doing and to enroll them into your programs or your company. That, that's a pretty convincing argument for using story as a marketing angle. I mean, I do, I think a lot of people sort of have heard that before and, and have seen people do it effectively, but, um, and, and you kind of mentioned this in your, in your journey and story as well. I think a lot of us, when we start business or we start doing something or serving, it, it's very tactical. It's very much like, what do I do? What are my skills? And you're, you're making a case for identity entrepreneurship, essentially um, understanding who we are as a person and making sure that everything we do has that identity fulfillment component to it. So it's not about skills. It's not about action per se. It's, it's about identity. It's about making sure that, you know, our company is trans is a, is a reflection, I guess, of our, of our own um, identity. That's a, that's an interesting uh, concept. Yeah. And there's a distinction there too. And it's something that I'm going through right now. And I just posted about it on, on Facebook today actually was that it's less about who we are because who we are is a static fixed idea okay. that's made up. It's made up of beliefs of stories and events that we've given meaning to that crystallize into what we know as an identity, right? What my realization has become is that it is not about who we are or who we think we are, but it's about who we're becoming. Yeah. 
because if we want to grow, we have our current self and we have our future self. And then there's a gap in between. Yeah. We will never be able to achieve what our future self is after with who we actually are right now. Yeah. Because the beliefs and the, and the identity and the events and the stories and all the stuff that make up this current self are not in coherence with the future self. And so when we are trying to make change, we'll be stuck in this cycle and we'll hit a ceiling because our identity is not in alignment with where we're trying to go. And so the way that we actually make that change is by intervening with new beliefs about not who we are in the future, because there's, there's a difference there. Right. And, but it's about who we can become. So we, as we reaffirm who we can become, then we can actually change who we are, but it's not this static thing. It's this ever evolving thing. And so with your core values, not only is it about who you are, but it's like, for me, like I'm not anywhere near where I want to be in terms of my health and my wellness and all that stuff. But there's that aspiration it's who I want to become. So if I don't shift things and move things in that direction towards where, I, where I'm going and wh- who I'm trying to become, then there's, there's going to be issues and there's going to be problems. You know, that's a really good distinction. And um, the, uh, I, I, was refl- I was thinking about this and I'm trying to remember the author's name, but the book Atomic Habits, I think it's Charles Durning or Charles something or other. Anyway, but, but he makes this distinction that you're making. That's a really good point where it's, uh, you know, if you want to do something, if you want to achieve something, you have to take on the identity of the thing you're trying to achieve, which is going to be different potentially or probably than what you are today. And so you have to start thinking about these achievements as a, as a future self. So that's a really good distinction. I, I want to pivot here real quick to talk about the, the great stuff you're doing. You and I have chatted about the health and wellness space uh, before, but uh, let's, let's catch up. What are some of the cool things you're doing in the health and wellness space from a partnership perspective? What, what's, what's brewing? Yeah. So um, I, uh, I just started an engagement with a infrared sauna company mm. and um, I'm going to be doing a 30 day I don't know. I haven't decided yet. 21 day, 30 day challenge where I take blood tests before, um, to measure like, for example, um, heavy metal, right. In my body or in my, in my blood. And then I will do the 30 days or the 21 days, whatever, then take blood tests after to show the before and after. And then I'll like review the product and show the process of me doing it the entire time. And I'm going to be putting that video on YouTube Mm -hmm. and Um, so I take a percentage of sales on the back end and they also send me this big infrared sauna and that's kind of how I'm, I'm changing up my business model a little bit, um, which is going to require me to grow an audience, which is great. And I'm also excited about that. And, and so that's like one example. Another example is I'm going to, um, summit in LA, uh, which is a big event. And I'm also going to this event in in Silicon Valley called Transformative Tech. And I'm just getting into the network. I'm getting into where these companies are hanging out and building relationships with the most innovative health and wellness technology companies. Um, Because what I realize is that I want to work with companies that have products that I would personally use. Like working with experts is great and I still will continue to do that and I love them. And I love all my clients. It's just like, I'm not buying a bunch of coaching packages and doing a bunch of online marketing stuff. So like, um, even if they're doing great work, like I get really excited about working with companies whose products I'm using. And so that's sort of the, the transition I'm making. It's, it's, you know, it's a slow process because I have deep ties into this one market, but, um, just slowly inching my way towards more and more of that stuff. Well, it's also an interesting sort of fascinating take on the business model where you're leveraging the power of storytelling and sort of participating in the success of the story itself for this particular company. That's a, that's a really a unique way to kind of change the business model to kind of make that, make that uh, transition over. Yeah, well, you know, I had done something that I think is really hard for service providers to do, which is to productize your offer and make it really optimized and really sequential and uh, super systemized. But 
it was, I was still stuck in this time for money sort of trap and project based income and chasing the next client. So like, you know, I, I could land the high ticket deals, but then it would take me a lot of time to fulfill on them. And then I'd have to go back and like lead gen. And it was always just a, this up and down. Right. And so I didn't really want to scale that business model because it just didn't sound like fun. Yeah. And so my workaround was like, if I build an audience, I'm using my skill set, which I'm really good at, which is like communicating, storytelling, and creating compelling content, uh, and along with like the marketing stuff. And using that skill set to grow an audience. And then I have leverage then to partner with these companies. And that way I can create an asset that works for me over and over again and creates MMR. And like I can charge higher fees on the front end. Um, if I have a big audience, you know, I can do much bigger deals than I was doing. So I can do a big fee and a percentage on the back end, right. you know, as the audience grows. And then in addition to that, like I could just hire maybe a couple team members, like an editor, like a social media person and like <clears throat> an admin person. And then like I could have a really boutique business that does like multiple six, maybe seven figures in revenue yeah. and really high margins. And it gives me the lifestyle that I want. I get to do the types of activities that I want. I get to sell products that I love. And um, it sounds all really nice like that. It's going to be a lot of work and I'm excited about the work too. Yeah. But it's a great case study in, taking uh, like deconstructing a business model that you didn't feel was serving you and was hard to scale. Um, not that it's impossible, but you like, you recognize like, this isn't, this doesn't sound fun. This doesn't sound like the thing I want to do. And then it, it, you, you've got a business model alignment, a values alignment, and essentially a lifestyle alignment where you've basically twisted the business model around to get you all three of those things um, kind of all running in the same direction. That that's, that's really impressive. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So my goal in the next like year or two years, because everything takes longer than you think it's going to take, yeah, um, sure. it's just to build up a nice size audience yeah. and uh, to do some, a couple deals with some great companies and uh, sort of in the next two years, replace my income with hands off uh, revenue. Nice. So, you know, I do the project once and then it works for me for a long time. And it continues to pay me out. Right. And that way I'll have a little bit more sustainability in what I'm doing. Right. Well, leverage, you're not gonna hear you're not gonna hear me argue with the concept of leverage. So good yeah. <laughs> good job. Uh, Kyle, we're we're out of time and I know you're super busy. I really appreciate you taking the time for this uh, conversation. But as uh, folks are listening and they want to connect with you and and kind of follow this journey as you're going through, what's a great way for them to to start off that process and in, in uh, kind of getting into your your world here, yeah, definitely just come find me on YouTube, Kyle Got Camera, or connect with me on any of the social excuse me social media platforms, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, it's Kyle Got Camera. And uh, if you're wanting to work with me uh, on an individual basis or for your company, then uh, you can go to apply.kylegotcamera.com. Great. And we got uh, your links there. So they're below the video if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're uh, listening to this or the show notes on the audio, it's there as well. If you're out and about, come on back to the show notes page and you can just click right on through. But Kyle got cameras pretty catchy. So you should really remember that one uh, probably on your own. Kyle, thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, thank you, Frank. I appreciate you, man. You got it. And uh, thank you for being here with us on this episode of the Six and Seven Figure Show. I've been your host, Frank Bria. Uh, I, I love the concept of uh, journey and alignment of your business model with who you are as a person. Uh, Kyle does this uh, really, really well. So take a look at the, some of the stuff he does. Um, and if you haven't gotten a picture of uh, that sort of transformative story he tells, you'll, you'll see it from his YouTube channel. So uh, check that out. Thanks so much for being with us and we'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.